Hi, my name is Zizarin, and this is another League starter for the 3.9 Metamorph League. This guide is going to be focusing on Essence Drain Trickster, which is a really, really strong choice for this league, and also possibly my League starter. Now, I have done a guide for this before, so I just wanted to make like a little update and explain a little more. I've got more experience with it since last time. A few things have changed, been added to the game, and I just want to talk about it a little bit in general. I'm either going to run with this build or a summoner, possibly something like either summon raiding spirits, skeletons, or zombies. But I'm a, I'm a big fan of wanting to run Essence Drain again. I think it'll be really strong in this league. This build is really good for both solo self on and trade league. Should be incredibly good for map clearing extremely fast. Should hopefully be really good at the new end game bosses as well, because that's what I'm going to be attempting this with. Uh, I'll be trying to do some extra crazy block stuff. Once I know a little bit more where I'm taking this build and how it fits into the new league content, I'll be putting in like an update video talking a little bit more about how to take it to like energy shield and chaos inoculation, stuff like that. The build has been nerfed slightly on clear speed. The AOE is definitely down. Uh, before I wouldn't like invest much into AOE at all, but uh, now I'm actually taking AOE nodes and I would normally only take that while leveling. Now I'll probably keep them at the end game as well. You could spec out of the AOE nodes for bossing, which is probably what I would intend to. So there, and there are a couple of other ways to play this build as well. So uh, I'm going to play a video that I've uh, prepared explaining how I use Path of Building. If you're already familiar with my guides and know how I do them with like the step-by-step -step leveling tree, you can skip this part and move straight to the actual build guide. If you haven't seen one before, I definitely recommend that you watch it because we use Path of Building pretty extensively here. First, I'm going to start by explaining how we use Path of Building in the guides and we use it quite a lot more than most guides you might be used to. If you've already seen this part, you can move to the description down below and click the timestamp button to skip directly to the guide. So first you need Path of Building. Path of Building is a third party program that you can download and it's in the description down below. It's completely safe and most people use it. It's a very powerful tool that lets you plan out your builds and import items, stuff like that. Now, once you have Path of Building, you can go and import the Path of Building link here by pasting it here. Once you have that, it should look... Well, it depends what build you're importing, because I'll use this for everything. But uh, it should look like the build of the video you're watching. And what we do, and I'm using a Gladiator Sunder Cyclone build here as an example, I show a step-by-step -step of what the skill tree looks like at certain levels. So at early levels, it's very, very easy, especially if you're a new player, to follow. And I also say when to ascend, and the um, and the ascension points are generally here. And I'll talk about that in the specific video as well, and why things are chosen. Um, but as you can see, the skill tree is evolving over time, and sometimes there will, there will be variations for, you know, if it's like different weapons, if it's 100, 200, and a lot of things like that. But wait, there's more. Um, under the skills, we usually do um, all like the different skills plus the leveling one. I'm trying out a new um, sort of like yeah, alphabetized group. So this is like your main attack skill. So as you can see here, you have ground slam to 8 to 12. But at 12, it gets replaced by Sunder. And I kept that in the, in the same like A. Just so you're understanding what I'm replacing it with. If there's no leveling, leveling video accompanying it. So uh, hopefully that'll make it very clear. Same here with obviously at early level you're using Ancestral Protector. And then you replace that same B with War Chief later on. Um, so we'll also put notes. Like for example here, um, Pulverize doesn't exist yet in Path of Building. And there's a few things that just, they're just not in Path of Building at the time that I'm making this guide. Um, this is going to happen a lot on, uh, on videos that are made around launch, just Path of Building's not updated yet. So, that's just not what much we can do about. And um, for the most part, I'll always put um, gems in a priority level. Like, my, my first priority is always going to be Onslaught, just because it ups your clear speed so much while, while killing. Um, and you can see, like, uh, different utilities and stuff. And another example here is plus blood and sand because that again doesn't exist in path of building um we also have uh different types of items 
So here we have early game access, mid game access, and in game access. Um, I think the jewels are displayed here. Yes. So what the way I do this is I, I make some like fairly okay items that are like, you know, depending on how fast you play somewhere that you'll have them between day one to three. And um, if you don't know how to get a tabula, for example, you can farm that in Act 9 fairly easily in Blood Aqueduct. And uh, we go through here and it's... Um, I never in my guides will put resists on the life gear because just you need to be resist capped. That's very important. 75% all resist. Remember that you lose resist in Act 5 and 10. Um, and then on the jewels, I'll try to do 4 slot jewels and try to say as many good stats as possible for that build. So there's no like, you don't see the same one twice here, but all of these work for the build. Hopefully that'll help. And then this is generally how I recommend rolling flasks. Um, there's even more in the notes as well. Uh, Mr. Madiki will generally go through and tell you exactly where to uh, buy the skill gems that you're needed. This is actually a tip by another streamer called Lyric who said it was sad there was nothing like this in Path of Exile guides. So I was like, that is actually a great idea for new players. Um, so we have that. So if you're wondering um, uh, where to buy things or if it can't be bought by your specific class, we call it a mule that you have to use another character to use it uh, or to buy it. And uh, all the details for that is in here. So hopefully it now makes more sense how to use the guides and how they work. Let's continue with the build guide. Before I felt that it was a little bit of a bad thing to not be able to just use Onslaught in the first like 40, 45 levels and or at least until you get like the Innocence Guaranteed Silver Flask. With Onslaught getting a nerf, this actually ends up being a good thing for us because we don't have to worry about other builds getting a huge speed boost early on. Uh, it, it should be a lot harder to keep up now that it's only a 3 or 4 second buff. I'm planning to use Frostbomb fairly early. I might try using Onslaught on it just to see how it is. Maybe once I get the Void Manipulation, I'll switch that out. One thing that's very nice for this build that came in Blight was Skitterbots. Now, Skitterbots was 20% more damage. Uh, it's now been nerfed down to 15%, but that's still a damage boost early on that we can take advantage of. There's usually not much we can really use Auras for early on. So something like Flesh and Stone and Skitterbots could be nice. If you don't need survival, you can drop the Flesh and Stone. Uh, just to have more mana and not have to worry about that as much. But Skitterbots is 100% worth picking up. And then obviously at level 24 you do get Malevolence. There are a couple of different endgame setups here. Um, I would say Energy Leech is better than a level 3 in power. Uh, most of the time it will be 2000 less damage or something like that. Like basically equal damage. But on those few seconds that you are actually leeching and there are not many. But uh, you will be doing more damage and then you don't have to be actually using an Empower Gem. Uh, and power level 4 is better than energy leech. Some people like your cane surge in their main links. I usually try to get this uh, either from your contagion or from a movement ability like flame dash or light. You can get it in other ways. If you're not getting arcane surge in any way, then I would probably recommend replacing your energy leech with arcane surge. You can have a 6 link blight in your chest and then use a 4 link essence drain in your gloves. Uh, I have a character called just Ziz in my profile if you do want to look at that. The reason I didn't include this is it's a little bit more advanced and you do need a uh, plus two glove with a uh, delirium craft onto it. It's a bit ambitious. Multimod recipe has been nerfed as well, but you can still multimod plus two onto a glove, no problem. Here's an example of what the glove would look like. So this is the plus one AOE gems, plus one projectile gems, and they come with the, uh, the free pierce and the eight... AoE, they are part of those crafts. So this is two mods with the multi-mod risk. You can get lucky with energy shield or resists and stuff like that. Getting a six link blight definitely helps for your single target. Obviously, you do have to be channeling that as well though. As normal, we have a leveling tree and an endgame tree. Uh, pretty standard stuff. So for leveling your character at the very start of the league, there are a couple of nice things you can pick up from vendors and get lucky with. Uh, plus one chaos is actually the best thing from what I can tell. Uh, by quite a lot this will like even if your your essence drain isn't actually linked in it uh, it'll get one more level and all spell gems scale insanely high from gem level uh, the other thing that you can get as well is chaos damage over time multiplier 
It'd be fantastic getting get both of these. You're most likely not going to. But um, these are things that you can... Uh, every time you level up, the vendors will refresh. So you can actually buy these off the vendors. So do keep a, a lookout for that. I usually like check the wand vendors most times when I go back in town early on. Rest of the gear is pretty standard. I never like specify exactly what resist you should have on what item. The only thing that you really need is to make sure you are resist capped and do remember you lose resist in Act 5 and Act 10 when you kill the different Katavas. Uh, but very, very generic. This is just life gear. There's no like insane stats you want to look for early. I would say try to aim for energy shield pieces uh, because this is very, very nice as a hybrid build. Uh, now what hybrid means is that we're going to have the main core of our pool is going to be life and then we're going to have a decent amount of energy shields left on top of that. This is particularly strong with our uh, Ghost Dance Ascendancy. Now, the last time I made this video, I had a lot of people coming to me going, Hey, sis, my build is really squishy. I'm dying. I would open their profile and they didn't have a Jade Flask like I suggested in the Flask window. This is the single most important thing for the Flask because the way this works is that um, when you get hit and you lose the Ghost Shroud, you recover Energy Shield based on your Evasion rating. So if you have very high Evasion, you get a huge chunk of energy shield by keeping you alive. And obviously you also get hit a lot less. So um, making sure you have a Jade Flask. Cannot stress how important that is. I would suggest uh, copying this like Flask setup as early as you can. And um, you know, like other things like increased charges recovered is good as well as the prefix. You don't have to go for reduced charges used. But uh, try to get especially Freeze Immune. Bleed Immune and Curse Immune, and then Shock Immune being the last priority there. Other than that, Jewels, you don't specifically have to take that exactly when the build says. Uh, as soon as you have a decent 2 stat or a 3 stat Jewel, I would suggest taking them. So for example, Life and Damage Over Time or Chaos Damage. Uh, you can use Spell Damage as well. So there are quite a lot of nice modifiers. Do remember that there is like Spell Damage while holding a Shield, Spell Damage while dual wielding, depending on what part of the game you're at. Spreading Wrath as well, you want to pick up as soon as you uh, get it in Act 5. And um, you remember that you don't have to have the actual like active int, it just needs to be inside the radius, it does not need to be allocated. As with quite a lot of the threshold jewels. As per usual, all like the ascendancies and stuff are included in the skill tree, so you can see 3rd, 4th lab, and which one. This is generally what I prefer. Technically on Suffer, you could ditch Escape Artist if you really don't want to live and get prolonged pain instead for additional damage. Now the skill tree is like fairly balanced. It should feel really good through all points of the game. And uh, you do get a, a healthy balance of life and damage. A lot of the gear is really easy for solo self fun as well. So for bandits for this build, I'm thinking about taking a Lyra at least start. This is because, especially on Hardcore, I'm going to struggle a lot on resists and gear early on. And the little mana regen can be nice as well. Um, definitely endgame, I will 100% be paying 20 regrets to switch to skill points. So if you're very confident and you want to make sure, like, keeping your gear up to date as you go, or you're on software and you just don't give a shit, then feel free to take skill points from the start. Pantheon is going to be Solaris and Shakari. Shakari for the Poison Immune and Solaris for some like boss damage reduction. So there's a couple of different endgame options that are pretty good here. So for weapons, uh, Cerberus Limb and a Magna Eclipses can be really good as a tanky option. However, it's not a crazy high damage. Definitely like a nice for hardcore or solo self on hardcore if you can get both of them. Magna Eclipses is from doing the Twilight Temple, which is the unique Moon Temple map. Uh, you would need to do both the Solaris and the Lunaris side, and then you can put them together. And you acquire this by vendoring both of them with the fusing. The Cerberus them as well is gotten from Delve. So these can definitely be quite challenging to get in Souls off on Hardcore. But uh, definitely not completely unrealistic as uh, both me and Steel Mage and a couple other players have been able to get these fairly early in a league. So I would just say that it's like 7 out of 10 hard. And the way it works is that uh, Cerberus them gives you energy shield per 5 armor on the equipped shield. Also gives you a little bit of armor per evasion rating and then evasion rating per energy shield. Now, obviously on top of this, it also gives a ton of spell damage and cast speed. And as you can see on this shield, it's got a decent amount of energy shield and a lot of armor. So if you're using this combo, this ends up being a 400 energy shield shield. 
which is obviously very beefy and nice for a build. If you can craft a helmet using a Baron Fossils, you can get a Aura uh, reducing Chaos Resist around you. This is great for damage. For chests, I would say this is when you want to start thinking about switching to CI endgame. A chest would look something like this, but this would be also really good even if you're still life hybrid. Basically what you're looking for is a high life, high energy shield, and high evasion hybrid armor. Gloves as well, just like high energy shield, high life. Uh, on the amulet, you can actually get an elder amulet with chaos damage over time and life. Rings, vermilion rings, and you can also craft uh, using envy essences. You can use that on amulets as well, and this will give you increased chaos damage. Stygian vice you can use, and um, you can also craft this with a barren fossils to get the chaos damage. And for a uh, searching eye, this is a great way to get onslaught and uh, war expression strain as well. So you just get an item level 50 searching eye and roll until you get between 6 to 8% onslaught for 4 seconds. And then life or energy shield depends on what you want at the time, most likely life. So roomies is worth considering. I'm thinking heavily about trying to go pretty hard on block. This is going to be like really really nice survival on top of all the other stuff. And the end game item that I would be looking for which is very rare and i'm most likely not going to get it but it's a timeless jewel called kilowava which changes the keystones to be come double your block chance then i'd be trying very hard to go for attack and spell block to be capped other things that are good for in game you could grab a chaos damage over time multiplier and spell damage one if you can fit plus one chaos level in there that would be great as well uh, do remember that spell damage has gotten a huge boost, so I think it goes up to 104 on the tier 1 roll now. You do also have hybrids, so we can see some spicy spell damage ones. This is going to be really good for the build. As far as a shield, if you're using just a random prophecy wand, you can just get a really high titanium spirit shield. Um, something else worth experimenting with is a shaped shield, and then you seeing an energy shield recovered when you block. This feeds really well into if you want to do like a block variant. I'll try to like talk more about that in an update later because it's going to be more advanced. Now in Blightling they added anointments which is basically letting us put notables on our amulets so we can get at least one notable. So diamond skin is one of the really good cheap ones. Another note that's relatively cheap and also strong is prodigal perfection. It basically turns the per 100 max mana you have you get increased spell damage up to a max of 40. So the total node is probably going to give us around between 20 and 30% increased spell damage. Um, what I'm most likely to be going for, because I really want to start stacking block, is going to be deflection. This is more expensive, but also pretty obtainable. And another good option is one of the duration nodes, just to make your essence drain and stuff like that last longer. There's pretty much a perfect fit on gems for this build. Uh, I think you have one or two extra spare slots. Uh, like I, I ended up leveling and enlightening in my build. So it shouldn't be a super tight fit. So while leveling, something that can feel really nice and actually sometimes let you drop the mana flask altogether is Soul Siphon. It basically gives you mana on kill. Uh, this isn't going to help you against bosses, but can feel really nice for clearing. Something that's really good while leveling is definitely going to be plus one chaos gem level ones. These are very easy to find and not too hard to roll as well. If you're later in the league trying to roll one for yourself, you can throw some aberrant fossils on a low level wand. Another useful leveling unit could be Cane of Unraveling. It did recently get buffed and is now plus two to all chaos gems. That means that even if you don't link it, it'll um, affect all your gems. I would recommend your normal uniques for leveling, like a plus one or plus two tabular would be insane, but even a regular one will do. Uh, same with just Wanderlust, Gold Rim. There's no like insane leveling items that really stand out, except plus one level ones. So just from Ghost Dance, we get quite a lot of defense. And while running around and regenerating your Ghost Dance charges, you're going to just keep your energy shield up that way. And you also get Fortify on the build. This helps a lot and makes you take a lot less damage. Don't worry about the nerf. It shouldn't really affect this build. It's more on builds that are doing insane Fortify stacking and from multiple different sources. So combined with all your utility flasks like Jade, Granite, uh, you can pop Valmo on Shell when you have a Granite. And we're not using Acrobatics on this build, so you're not like taking a big chunk of armor hit. Um, if you pop a Granite and a Valmo on Shell right after, you should have like 3k extra life just from that. Which gives you a really nice chunk of survival. 
The sustaining comes mostly from the ghost dance, but you do also heal yourself using essence drain, and that gets spread by your contagion. So you're usually just going to use malevolence. Skitter buff is really good as well, and another thing that you can look into putting in is the spider aura, which is 15% more damage. Uh, you would need to like make some reworks with auras and enlightens to fit all of these, but they're like the main ones that affect your build. Also remember that if you can get a watcher side with malevolence damage, this is an insane damage boost, but it's going to be very expensive. So the build is like fairly limited on how much damage it can be. Um, it would be very hard to get this build like over like 2 million damage. Blight can end up being quite a lot of damage, but you do end up standing in melee range and actively channeling, which is a bit of an issue. Vile Blight is great as well, um, but in general the build is like great player speed and pretty decent boss damage. Most of the stuff for this build should be easy to get and fairly doable and solo southbound. I'd say the more advanced stuff would be like timeless jewels if you do end up trying to go for that. That is what I'm going to try to go for, but obviously it's very rare, especially in solo southbound. So it's a very low chance of that. Other than that, it's a great solo southbound build and suitable for all the leagues. I want to talk a little bit about how you actually play the build in case someone's completely new to a skill that uses two different spells. So whenever I'm playing, you'll generally see me throw down a contagion first and then an essence drain into that. The way it works is that the contagion is going to spread the damage from the essence drain because contagion on its own does very little damage. Sometimes on the forums, we'll see people comparing Bane and Contagion, and there are new players going like, why would anyone use Contagion? Bane is so much better. Generally, these players don't know that Contagion is mostly there for spreading the essence drain damage and not actually trying to compete on damage on its own. Um, while you're leveling early, if you do have some leveling gear, like plus one chaos or chaos damage dot multiplier, then Contagion on its own is actually good enough to kill, so you can just run around throwing Contagion down without needing to Essence Drain. But you'll notice that pretty quickly and probably get the hang of that. Now do remember that there are new currencies with new modifiers coming into the game. We don't really know how this is going to affect the build, but I'll try to make an update video if there's something that's like, wow, this is amazing for this build. Same with all the new uniques coming out. Another small tip, especially if you're solo self on and struggling on alchemies, is that you can uh, attach the item rarity support to Contagion and that'll count on everything that you've been killed as long as it gets touched by Contagion. Do remember that added damage to spells doesn't really do anything for this build. So hope this guide helps you. I'll be trying to put as many updates and stuff on YouTube as possible after League Start, but I will generally be online all the time. Do remember that we're doing a shit ton of giveaways on my Twitch channel between the 13th and 25th. So tune in and see if you uh, can win some stuff there. One of them is a huge desktop computer by MSI, which is awesome. And I'm really excited for that. Generally, all the giveaways and when they will be will be announced on my Twitter. So that's a great place to tune in. If you do have any questions or anything was confusing, drop by my Twitch channel at any time and ask. Twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching and try to die less than I do.